Mo thinks recycling is very important. Of course, he separates his household waste and uses recyclable plastic bottles. Separating, sorting, regrinding, reprocessing. That's how it works. But what does his plastic bottle have to do with a crystallizer? PET is an important resource used in the plastics processing industry. We all know it from drinks bottles, for example. These drinks bottles are either recyclable or single-use. The material itself, PET, is too valuable to be just wasted, which is why it's often recycled. For example, if we look at recyclable bottles, they have a life cycle of roughly 25 refills. Regrind can be washed, chemically prepared and fed into a recycling process. For PET, you need to take into consideration that the material is available in amorphous or crystallized states and is a hydroscopic material. Hydroscopic means it takes on a lot of water. In order to process PET, it needs to be dried until it has very little residual moisture. This can be 50 ppm, which is what's needed to use PET in high-quality plastic processing processes. To achieve such low drying states, PET needs to be dried at relatively high temperatures, usually between 140 and 180 degrees Celsius. Mo wants to find out. Luckily, most plastics are labelled. So first Mo cleans it. Then he cuts it up into very small pieces. Which isn't that easy. In reality, this is done by machines, of course. He then sends the small bits of cut-up plastic to a recycling plant. Right, seal the package properly. And into the post it goes. A few days later, a package arrives for Mo. His PET pieces have been made into recycled granulate. In his lab, Mo heats the recycled PET granulate to 180 degrees. He notices that the individual granules are sticking together. Nothing new can be made from it like this. But why? PET usually cools quickly during production. As a result, the molecular chains of the plastic end up disordered. This condition is called amorphous. A crystallizer transforms PET from its difficult-to-handle amorphous state to a crystallized state so the material is ready to be dried. Crystallized PET is hard and no longer sticks together, meaning it flows properly. It can then be dried easily in normal plastic dryers, such as hot air dryers. Mo understands. He empties the recycled PET into the crystallizer in his lab. Now he just has to wait. After crystallization, Mo once again heats the granulate to 180 degrees Celsius. Then he checks the consistency. This time, the individual granules don't stick together, but trickle out of the container without any problems. In this condition, the granulate can be dried in a dry air dryer. But what can be made from the recycled PET? Quite a lot of different things, from pens to sport clothing. Time for a bit of refreshment. Oh no, how clumsy. Ugh. Luckily, it was a PET bottle.